My life kind of sucked. I was barely making any money, and I saw this announcement. I already cast it a little bit, and I remember seeing this happen and realizing there is going to be a crazy opportunity for me here. All right, guys. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the announcement of StarCraft II. This happened in Seoul, Korea. This video that was uploaded was 16 years ago. If you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, and you're not familiar with me, I am a StarCraft commentator based in Korea. The first commentator to move to the country. I've been out here for 15 years. And this was a big moment for me to see this happen. I was working a job uh, on my college campus, painting dorm rooms and moving furniture, doing a little bit of casting back then. And I remember looking at this and thinking, oh my God, this might change everything for me. Uh, I apologize in advance for the quality of the video. This is, this is what quality was back then. Let me just, all right, 480p is the best we're gonna get. We're here in Seoul along with 50,000 game fans to see the latest game announcement by Bliss. So I'm not familiar with this guy, by the way. Sweden always was ahead of the curb in gaming though. I think people think of, and by the way, this is a Swedish presenter. Again, I'm not familiar with who he is, but I feel like there were a couple countries that got esports and the rest didn't. Korea certainly won. And then probably Sweden and Germany, to be honest. And obviously, you know, with DreamHack uh, being originally a Swedish company now owned by ESL, and then ESL being a German company, it's, it's not surprising to see that those were the, uh, the orgs that kind of rose up above everything. One thing to note here, by the way, was that I freeze on the on the hot girls. <laughs> One thing to note here, by the way, was that Blizzard did not have the kind of presence they wanted to have for StarCraft in Korea. StarCraft One um, was taken technically illegally and put on TV and monetized and um, uh, uh, distributed uh, uh, all over the country without Blizzard being involved. Blizzard tried to get involved. The, um, uh, you know, they they did uh, have, I believe, a cease and desist was sent, which the Koreans ignored. And, um, yeah, uh, uh, the Koreans kind of locked him out. And so Blizzard, one of Blizzard's big plans was to come in and hit hard and actually, um, you know, try to reclaim their position in esports uh, with StarCraft 2 and, and kind of get more of the Korean fans with them. World of Warcraft also had a massive presence in the country. It was huge. World of Warcraft really put Blizzard financially in a position to do a whole lot more. Um, in every direction that they wanted with the subscription model. Keep in mind, too, that like even Blizzard Esports could probably could not have happened if World of Warcraft had not been the big success that it was. This was the Blizzard Worldwide uh, Invitational. Um, so Blizzard Worldwide Invitational was basically... A uh, uh, it's like BlizzCon, but it wasn't in California. If that makes sense, uh, I actually got to attend one in. Uh, I think I actually attended one of these early on in Korea, as well as one in Paris. In two hours, Blizzard will announce their new game at this stage. Yeah, that was Todd back there. That's right. You can see Slayer's Boxer back there. Um, a lot of the outfits they had the players wear. Very campy by today's standards. Uh, we did do another video where we looked at HOT Forever versus XCS Gurren from the year 2000. One of the first, I think actually the first televised match in Korea, unless somebody can find something older on record. Um, but yeah, you know, they I hadn't... Um, anyways. Anyways. So a lot of OGs from Blizzard here. Can you give us any hints on the game you're about to announce? Here's Frank Pierce, VP of Blizzard. No, we're only hours away from the opening ceremony. It's going to be the biggest event in the history of our organization. I, I cannot give any hints. Will it be StarCraft 2? Or will it be WarCraft 4? World of StarCraft? Isn't that funny? I mean, obviously, they had to speculate at the time, but, I mean, what a different universe we would have all been in. Warcraft 4 or World of Starcraft. By the way, not the craziest predictions. 
You know, that it, it could have. It could have. Um, but yeah. Or maybe Diablo 3. That came eventually too. What game will it be? I don't know. What, what game? What game? What game? Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be like Warcraft Fighter 35 or something like that. Ah, start of the... <laughs> World of Warcraft. Well, I'm thinking because of Everybody Warcraft. Everybody had different hair back then, by the way. Spiky hair was in. A lot of Koreans with kind of big hair. Where we are, I think it's got to be StarCraft 2. You know, I, I don't think they want to compete with themselves with another MMO. And StarCraft 2 is just a He's part of right. the culture here. It's just, uh, you he know, gets it. It's a big part of the culture. StarCraft is probably the premier title even all these years later, so I'd argue for I mean, obviously, yeah, he's totally right. You look at where they announced this. Why would they be in Korea announcing anything other than that? Uh, Excuse me? A couple of Protoss players back there. Oh, Here we go. Soon, very soon. Chris Metzen. Game? Well, I'm not game. What game will it be? <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be StarCraft 2. Probably an RTS. I'm hoping for an MMORPG, most or a mix between the two, but most likely it's going to be just an RTS, which is still totally fine. I'm thinking it's going to be that because of where we're at for the for the announcement, which is Korea, which you know is a huge following for she gets RTS, it. StarCraft in general. Also, These because game journalists you know, were better back then. Since the original came, or ten years since the original came out, so I mean it's about time we saw another one, and I think that that's probably what it's going to be. Okay, sweet. What? StarCraft 2. Uh, usually, I use, I play the, wow. That's something to, <laughs> I mean, Warcraft? I know. <laughs> you know what's funny, by the way? People in Korea, are, the English has just gotten better. All these um, English uh, classes that were pushed on the younger generation, you have, especially with the younger generation, a lot more people speak English, but it's interesting kind of going around seeing how broken everybody's English was back then, too. Hacked. So what do you think of the event so far? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Chris Sigety, a this guy's a legend, by the way. I've, I've had the opportunity to talk to this guy a couple times. Totally loved StarCraft. Uh, like all the other uh, OGs, no longer at Blizzard. Air balloon out in the middle between the two buildings. I, I think you know you made it when there's a hot air balloon, you know? <laughs> there's two Olympic stadiums involved, and just the whole thing, the production value is absolutely amazing. We're, we're totally astounded by this whole thing, really. So I think, yeah, what if he said Olympic City, this must be at Olympic Park. This is actually not far from where the GSL studio is. Not far from Samsung Station, which is right by Gangnam Station. So Eastern Seoul. I can't say that just yet. You'll have to wait and see. I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, Blizzard Worldwide Invitational, this is what I was talking about. This is when Blizzard seemed to have more ambitions about having BlizzCon-like convention-like announcement-like stuff, not just in Anaheim, California. Uh, they axed this, I think, uh, maybe a year after StarCraft II came out. It's a little bit hard for me to remember. It's so long ago. But this was a thing, uh, and I did work at a couple of these uh, events. Um yeah, yeah. In fact, I might have already worked at one um, or, or two. I can't remember. Some of this gets garbled in my memory. But anyways, yeah, here comes the big announcement. Mike Morheim, the legend. Founder of Blizzard Entertainment. Paul Sands, CEO of Blizzard Entertainment. Frank Pierce, Senior Vice President of Product Development, Blizzard Entertainment. Rob Pardo, Vice President of Game Design, Blizzard Entertainment. Chris Metzen, Vice President of Creative Development. 
England Blizzard Entertainment. Next is Neil Hubbard, Vice President of Global Marketing Blizzard Entertainment. Next is Michael Ryder, Executive Managing Director, International Blizzard Entertainment. Tongwon Han, Managing Director, Blizzard None of these guys are there, by the way. They are all gone. Bobby Kotek destroyed this legacy. Mike Morheim with a classy bow there. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the 2007 Blizzard Worldwide Invitational. Without further ado, it is my honor to present to you Blizzard's newest game. And just not to make this about me too much, but I, I was summer job living in one of the dorms on college, again, painting dorm rooms and moving mattresses and my life kind of sucked. I was barely making any money and I saw this announcement. I already cast it a little bit and I remember seeing this happen uh, and realizing there is going to be a crazy opportunity, uh, opportunity for me here. It's Korean for at last. The hell, it's about time. Wow. Pretty exciting. Very cool. I'm getting emotional, man. And I don't, I, I, this video is about to end. Uh, chat, How chat. do you feel now oh. after the announcement? Continue in part two. What? There's a part two? I don't know that I can find that. I can't find that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, that was a crazy moment. Crazy moment uh, in history. Uh, chat's asking, did they announce that three years uh, three years in advance? Yes, they did. Uh, although I don't know if they knew exactly when they were going to release the game. Uh, Blizzard definitely had the luxury of being able to take their time back then. Um, but yeah, crazy, crazy moment. Shortly after this was announced, uh, I moved to Korea to start working in StarCraft 1, WarCraft 3. Uh, in the hopes of eventually getting a job in StarCraft 2. And um, for those of you that do you know that did work out well, GSL is the longest lasting esports show of all time. Uh, StarCraft 2 tournament that still goes on to this day. And um, yeah, very cool to go back and see that moment. Had StarCraft 2 um, not been made, I don't know that esports would be where it is today. And I don't know that Twitch would be where it is today. Uh, Twitch uh, or Justin TV at the time, their big boom happened when uh, all these people started streaming StarCraft 2 and watching StarCraft 2 on their platform that uh, made, prompted them to make the decision to rebrand as Twitch. And um, we saw global esports take off. We saw all these huge BlizzCons with StarCraft events. We had IPL, we had MLG, we had um, events all over Europe and Asia. Uh, and then this carried on into League of Legends and other games uh, that you all now know, Counter-Strike as well, um, had their big blow up too. So. Very cool to kind of go back and look at that and have that nostalgic moment. Again, if you like this kind of content, please do like and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this uh, in the video. If you have any happy memories you want to share. See this 1A, 2A, 3A shirt I've got on? Uh, you can get that at tastesthreads.com. A bunch of other cool merches there as well. Have a good day, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.